that you get, madam. Thanks. You have no idea what you put your mother through. Bob! To be so selfish, so stupid, Donna. I don't know where you get it from, I really don't. Of course we're glad you're safe. But why did you do it, love? Why did you lie? An overdose? Well... OK, Bob. Donna, what made you do it? If you knew how frightened I was, don't you remember what it was like with Kelly, that cricket pavilion? It's all about you, ain't it? I didn't do it for fun, you know. As soon as you get your nose out the self-help, but you'll realise that other people need help. And you wonder where I get it from. Andy, toast. You did it. Hope you lot are ashamed of yourselves. Dad, please. What? You won't get any sympathy from me. Not another lecture, Dad. Why well, a bunch of young people can't enjoy themselves just to have a laugh without getting into such a state. Well, Dad, this isn't helping. What about poor Donna? Why wasn't anyone looking out for her? Didn't anyone notice that she was upset? Well, how were we to know she'd do something so stupid? Well, you're supposed to be her friends. She could have died for all you knew. Do none of you care? Right, here endeth the lesson. You're not going to spoil my day. I'm never getting drunk. Good. Now, you lot could learn a lesson from her. Here, add a piece of toast. Jack, that was mine. Well, you weren't fast enough. Oh, no! Hey, don't tidy it away. I'd like to save him a triumph. Don't be simple. Don't be simple. Excuse me. I've got houses on Park Lane, I've got hotels on Fleet Street and Trafalgar Square, and you call that simple. That's a property empire, that is. The top hat triumphs. Only because you were cheating. I wasn't cheating, and that's slander. You were stealing from the bank. Yeah, but you can't prove it, can you? It's not my fault if the bank is too trusting. Paddy, what sort of example is that? Oh, it's only a game. I might give charity a game next time I see you. Come on, let's put it away. Can't take it to home farm. I'm not sure it's the sort of game charity plays. Yeah, we'll want to make friends with her. I know you do, of course you do. It's just not the sort of game you want to be playing with Chris Tate, because he cries if he loses. <laughs> I'll get your coat on and I'll give you a lift. I'm really grateful to you. Oh, I'm getting about in hospitals. I don't know. I've eaten that much chocolate. I don't know what I'd have done without you. How could I not have been there? Oh, the things that it takes to make you see what's important. Look at that, eh? Rum and raisin, a Turkish delight. I'm just glad that she's OK. Imagine if she had really taken something. It, pacing up and down, it's all you can do. I mean, you, you feel so useless. What's this? Oh, Bob. What, what is this, Viv? This, this, is my, this is my wedding suit! Oh, I'm so sorry. I really am sorry. It was last night. I... But this is a suit that I married you in! I, I, was, I was really angry. I tried to manage it. Please forgive me. Please, please. Oh, it's, it's probably for the best. You have someone's eye out with that lapel. What? Well, let, let's just leave it, shall we? What, you're yeah? not angry? Well, not much point, is there? When you think about what we've just been through with Donna, I mean, a few mutilated cuffs, it doesn't seem such a calamity, does it? Oh, what's wrong with me? What am I doing to you, driving Donna away? She's right, I'm a terrible mother. Nay, now stop, that is not good. I'm not fit. Well, and I am. Now, nobody finds it easy, Viv, how to be a parent. I mean, they can put a man on the moon. They haven't worked that one out yet. You are a great mum. She is lucky to have you. Thank you. Well, at least you won't be taking your clothes off with her all this time. I'll go and take a brew into Donna. I'm so sorry. You know, for a few hours back there, I forgot about our little situation. Yeah. One square left. Mark! Mark! I'm off for a pint. Hey, I've got your money here for you. Oh, you were skint. You been holding out on me? No, just like to borrow that from Scott. Hey, it's like to suck in that. Everything I know you taught me. You're 20 quid over here. Yeah. Bonus. 20 quid? That the price of your conscience. Why, well, don't. It's not as if they're stupid, they're intelligent kids, but when you try and talk sense to them, appeal to reason. All you can be is dad. You can't make the mistakes for them. They learn. I hope so. I do feel sorry for Donna. 
I think she had to pull a stunt like that. At least Donna's got an excuse. She's only 16. You know, Morticia is still holed up in Rodney's attic. Steph. So Rodney says, but I wouldn't go digging under the patio at Mill Cottage. Don't. I've heard she sleeps in a vat of formaldehyde. Beauty secrets of the damned. Uh, <laughs> and what are your secrets, Dad? Circulation. As long as the blood is pumping. Oh, is that right? Come here a second. Oh, Jack, what was that? Put some colour in your cheeks. Don't get. Come round for supper later. Uh, you come over. Gave the kids an ear bashing earlier. I'm sure they'll steer clear. I'll cook your meal. Great. You know, I feel my complexion becoming more schoolgirlish. Give us another go, see what happens. <laughs> Must we be subjecting? All right, keep your hat on. Orange shoes. You know, you're not so very much younger than I am, Jack Sugden. Well, maybe you could do with something to get your circulation going and all, Edna. Oh, you just never grown up. I came to ask, will we be seeing you at this afternoon's committee meeting? On the village hall. Sorry, I've got a date. And you know what us kids are like? <sighs> Spend all day getting ready. And what are you doing? Drinking your good friend's money away? I've just paid him, Edna. As for good friend, he was right stroppy about it. Well, must have been very difficult for him to ask. Oh, he's just bitter and twisted. I tried and crack a joke and he jumped down my throat. Oh, we used to be good mates. And now he's reduced to coming to you for money. You might show more compassion. Yeah, and you might make better use of yours. I know, I'm a total idiot. I'm sorry, Bob. Who said anything, eh? Look, Donna, I'm sorry I had a go. I was upset. If anything really did happen... I would just... I don't know what I was doing. I wasn't thinking. I feel so stupid. I know you do, love. These things, they, they just don't come from nowhere. Your mother and I should have seen something. We've been so busy drawn into our own little drama. I thought I knew where we were at. You know, even if it was a bit mad, just you, me and Mum. And then Dawn comes along and you go mental, and now I don't even know who your family is anymore. We're family, me, you and your Mum. Just cos Dawn's on the scene now, it doesn't mean... I need you, Donna, to help me look after your Mum. We are family. Except we're not, are we? You and Mum are split up and there's nothing I can do about it. I have to draw the line somewhere, love. She's... she's committed adultery, and that's bad. D do you not see that that's damaging? But you love her, Bob! Of course I love her, and I'm crazy about her. But if I allow her to do this, what else will I allow? How many more cruel things should I let her do to me? I want to be with her, but she could ruin me. She loves you. And you love her. Doesn't that count for anything? This is killing me, Donna. You know, I don't know if I'm being sensible and manly or cutting out my heart to spite myself. So what are you going to do? We both need you, you know. Bob. There doesn't seem to be much to discuss on that front. We have a very experienced professional builder in Jerry McKinley. I'll uh, speak to him this evening, see when he can start. Hold up, Edna. Mr McKinley's not the only builder in district. Not even the only builder in Emmerdale. What about Sid? Oh, I don't know. Jack wasn't too happy about the work he did in our old place. <laughs> Thank you, Len. Then it's decided. It is not decided. Oh, must you be difficult? Why should we not give the contract to Jerry McKinley? There's somewhat about him that don't sit right. That's why. She was upset, Elaine. That's no excuse for behaving the way she did. Hi. She wasn't talking about you. <laughs> yes, I was. What do you want to go do something like that for? Look, I was drunk and upset. I'm really sorry. It's no excuse. Look, we were really worried about you, Donna. I mean, was it because of Stephen and that? Not really. Yeah, and Mum and Bob. 
looking for attention from a stupid boy. Elaine! And if that didn't work, you were going to top yourself for real. Look, I'm really sorry. I didn't think. I'm sorry for scaring you. But I'm really grateful to have friends that actually care about me. What do you think of this? I painted it myself, stuck my fingers together three times, and nearly missed my boss. Oh, it's lovely. Do you think she'll like it? She? Charity? Oh, well. It's it's tricky getting presents for a millionaire. Cos everything she wants, she can just buy. That's true. Diamonds or anything. It is nice, but... What? What does she want with this? Bit of old rubbish to her? It's not a bit of old rubbish. It's lovely. It's a lovely thing to do to make her something like that and she'd be mad not to love it. Any mother would. That is nice. It's beautiful. I'll merely point out, Mrs. Birch, that roofing at Thor's a serious job and it behoves committee to find best person it can. Yes. Which is why it would be madness best to go afraid. elsewhere when we have an experienced professional builder right here in this village. We have been over and over this. And unless you are going to make an accusation against Mr. McKinley, I shall be very careful what you say about him. What do you think, Betty? What do I th think about the uh, the situation regarding the, uh, the the roofing? Oh, never mind. Look, all I'm arguing is we leave job open to offers. Whoever makes most attractive court gets job. Yes. <laughs> I'm glad you agree. Betty. Yeah, it's very well said. Then we're agreed. At last, let's go. How's that home brew, Jarvis? <laughs> I am very disappointed in you, Len Reynolds. Thanks for talking to her. Well, I was just upset. I see she's decided to face the world. Nice for mates to come round, isn't it? Hope they don't give her too hard a time. You're a good man, Bob. Yeah, well, I, you know, I want to be, Viv. And I, I want to do it for you. But you know, I'm standing here where I've stood a million times before, and I look at you, and I look at you, and I, I see him. I can't help it. Bob. I know I should just get over it. It's what modern couples do. But was it too much to ask you just to be faithful? Am, am, I, am I just being ridiculously old-fashioned here? What do you want? Oh, what I want and what's right, they're not the same thing. I mean, you might be bad for me, Viv, but I'm hooked. I, I can't stop caring. Can you ever forgive me? I don't know. I mean, I want to. I don't know. Yeah, I know it was stupid. I'm not trying to make excuses, but... Well, it's the way Mum and Bob have been acting. They've been so caught up in themselves, they hardly even know I'm there. So you thought you'd remind them? Seriously, Donna, you want to have a word with yourself? You can't just go on what people think, or if they don't pay you enough attention. And you can't expect your parents to have a clue just because they're old. Yeah, I know. Mum and Bob are the worst. And his dad's the same. I mean, he has to go to us for being immature, but he's like a little kid when it comes to Diane Blackstone. Uh, Katie, can you come home? Dad's driving us mad getting ready for tonight. Could you just tell him that his hair looks great and you love his shoes? <laughs> Hi, Rob. Aren't you dead? Come on, Katie. Rob! Don't be horrible! See you later. There's no real harm done, eh? How long does it take you to make a cup of tea? There you go. Something troubling you, Edna? Oh, that Betty Eggleton and Len Reynolds. A pair of children. And Jarvis Skelton. Unreasonable man. Oh, you went to that meeting. Hey. I hope we didn't get wound up with my account. Oh, don't be ridiculous. I mean, I'm back on track. Sydney's paid up. I'll get work. I know you will. That's Alan Turner. He's another one. I hope he didn't make any remarks when you gave him his rent. I haven't paid him yet. I will, but I haven't paid him yet. I mean, he was on my back early. I didn't want to give him the satisfaction. Pride. Stupid of me. Well, you will. I will. But I haven't yet, and I just wanted to let you know that. I mean, you're always sticking up for me, Edna. I wouldn't want you thinking I wasn't being straight with you. You're a good man. 
Do you know what really freak him out? Katie, how's that sauce? It's fine. The sauce is fine. Donna's fine. It's all fine. Get ready. What, Rob? Us lot, gooseberries on his big date. You're evil, Rob. Well, he'll want us to be here, won't he? Definitely. Need our moral support. <laughs> Nice go on the right, Victoria. Is Diane Daddy's girlfriend? I don't know. You better ask him. <sighs> this time? Wrong colour, Jack. Daddy, is Diane your girlfriend? I don't really know, Victoria. What do you think? I can say, without doubt, you are the handsomest and best-dressed man I have ever seen in my entire life. Forget the tie, though. Forget the tie. He's a big kid. She's early. Get that, will you, someone? Dad, there's a beautiful stranger here. I think it's Diane's younger, glamorous niece. Cheeky get. Well, tell her to go away. I'm expecting her aunt. It is Diane! Hi, Victoria. Yeah, one minute, OK. Where are you lot going tonight? Oh, we was um, thinking of staying in, Watch your TV. I thought you were going to see how Donna was. I'll expect she'll want to be alone, to be honest, Diane. Yeah, best leave it. Chuck us the remote, Andy. Diane, are you and Daddy girlfriend and boyfriend? My friend Walter has a girlfriend. Susie Lee, she's very bossy. Uh, sorry, Diane. Worth the wait. You gonna get Diane a drink, Dad? Uh, yeah. Uh, wine, Diane? Kids! Hop it. Victoria, hey. Go on, quickly, or I'll snog your father right here. Do you not bluff in? Yes. All right, we're going. Andy, get my coat for us, will you? See ya. Diane. What? I knew that'd shift them. Come here. <laughs> Hold away like a princess in a tower. <laughs> Do you know, Bob, they've either got the reds in the clouds round here or buried in the sand like ostriches. <laughs> I mean, take that one there. Eh? <laughs> Tough as old boots, you'd think. But gooey about that Mac, like it were a Yorkshire terrier. Edna? Don't try and soft-soap me. I know who my real friends are. Yeah, could you get them in, Edna? Hey, look, uh, there's a fiver. I've got to, uh, I've got to pay a visit. Do you know on Steph? No, there's no word of it and no sign of her. And I know Alan's worried about her. But that's kids, eh? Do we have them or do they have us? That's the thing. That's true. Well, surely you have each other. That's what a family is, isn't it? Oh, well. I don't know what a family is anymore. I mean, look at that poor little Donna Windsor. Sweet sherry, please, Bob. I mean, what sort of a family is that? Having to fake your own death just to make your mother notice you. Excuse me! Oh, I'm not blaming you, Bob, love, no. And I'm not saying it's easy, but I mean, it isn't easy first time, is it? I mean, one attempted suicide could be bad luck, but more than one, well, <laughs> it doesn't say much about Viv's parenting skills, does it? <laughs> this is Eggleton. That is my wife you're talking about and her daughter. Now, you don't know what sort of family it is, well, I'll tell you. It's my family. Now, we may not be perfect, but some respect, please. Macaroni cheese. That was very exotic. Well, I used to live in Rome, you know. When I was young. Say it like that, you sound like an old man. Well, I feel like it sometimes. Other times, well, look at me earlier, acting like a stupid teenager. While Katie's gearing up to be a 16-year-old housewife. <laughs> well, if that's the way around the want it, maybe we should act more like kids. What do you mean, out clubbing all night? Getting our hearts broken on a weekly basis. Yeah, sitting up all night, talking rubbish like it was the most important thing in the world. Sometimes staying up all night is the most important thing in the world. I'm not sure if I've got the energy anymore. Anyway, you wouldn't want to be a kid again, would you? I don't know I'd be that different. I'm nearly 40 years older than Donna Windsor. Maybe a fortnight wiser. Oh, you don't mean that. Not a bad thing, perhaps. Look at Viv. I mean, the woman's bonkers, but at least she's got drama in her life. 
And Bob's about 12. I swear he's got bits of string and marbles in his pockets. All that crisis to crisis stuff, they have fun. Well, and you don't. Could take that the wrong way. Anyway, if you lived with my lot, you'd soon get a taste for stability. Oh, come on, you're as much fun as them. <sighs> you think? I seem to spend most of my time disapproving of the kids. And it's nothing I haven't done myself. And if I'm honest, nothing I wouldn't do again. If it wasn't for the fact that I had to be a responsible adult, that's the real difference. And whoever has to be a grown-up. I tell you what, why don't we give them something to disapprove of? What have you got in mind? Give us some of that tiramisu and we'll see. <laughs> and there's another one there. Head in the clouds or buried in the sand. Sometimes a lovely fiction's more important than truth. Oh, they had you down as a bit more hard-nosed than that. About more things, Mrs. Eddleton. Another pint when you're ready, Bob. I'm really grateful to you, you know. Everything you've done, standing up for me. Sure. Did you mean that about your family, me and Donna? Of course I did. I told you, I In can't... your own time. I'm talking to my wife. I told you, I can't stop caring. Donna's a child, but we're not. We can't afford to act like kids. That's what drove Donna to do what she did. It still hurts, Viv. But love's a duty as well as an emotion. We just have to live with what happened. Stay strong together. But your wedding suit? Don't need one. I'm already married. For better or for worse. Fourth time round, but this time, you know, this time, for the first time, I really know what that means. Oh, Bob. Do you mean it? We could get you a whole new wardrobe. Please, come home. We could go on holiday, just the three of us. I promise, it will all be good. We can celebrate. Please, close up early, come home, please. Wait, 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 Viv. I meant what I said. I'm serious about making this work. But there's a lot of damage that needs to be undone. Let's just, let's, let's take things slowly, eh? One step at a time. But Bob. I'm serious, Vivian. I love you. But we've got the rest of our lives. We have to do this right. Sorry, Len. Pint was in. <laughs>